everybody. And welcome to worship service at the Recovery Church. Thank you all for coming. A um, couple of announcements for us before we go again. We just don't know yet what the future will hold. We'll keep doing this week by week basis, at least probably through the month of May we'll be doing online before we can do anything in person. One thing that we've found out is that there are a number of us who have not heard that the worship service is being broadcast online. So please, if you're on Facebook and you see the little notice that the Recovery Church is, is celebrating worship service, share that so people can see it. Email friends and family, call someone and tell them that they can get it at the recoverychurch.org and, and be able to join us in worship. Because there are several people who when they found out was like, oh shoot, I wish I knew that. So, so please invite them to come. Um, I'm looking at Martha because there's something I'm thinking like I'm forgetting to say, but I do wanna say that we, it, is, it, is, it is Mother's Day, or in Minnesota also known as fishing opener. So <laughs> we, can, we can celebrate that. And Martha has been really insistent that we try and add some humor and levity and perspective to this, this time. And so I borrowed Danielle's joke book and tried to get some good jokes for Mother's, Mother's Day. So here we go. Why are computers so smart? Because they listen to their motherboards. Why do kangaroos, why do mother kangaroos hate rainy days? Because the kids have to play inside. <laughs> What did the mother rope say to her child? Don't be so naughty. That was, da that was a Danielle joke. Okay, why did little Bobby chop his joke book in half? Because his mother told him to cut the comedy. <laughs> so, with that, now, now is the time where we get to pass the peace of Christ say good morning to each other, please. Include your family at home, send a text, say hello to somebody walking down the street this afternoon if you see them. But it is important that we, we do pass the peace of Christ whenever we get an opportunity in this, in this new world. So let's all stand up, do our jazz hands, give, give ourselves a hug, hug the person standing next to you, sitting next to you, Chris, that means you, and then let's, uh, let's enjoy the worship service. Good morning. Welcome to the Recovery Church. My name is Martha, and I am a grateful recovering alcoholic. Finding lots of other things to work on during this quarantine, too. How about you? <laughs> Let's take a moment to center ourselves and to picture all the people that are usually around us when we're in this space. Bring them into our minds. Welcome to this place which you make holy by your presence. Come in with all your vulnerabilities and strengths, all your fears and anxieties, all your loves and your hopes. For here you need not hide or pretend to be anything other than who you are and who you are called to be. Come into this place where we can heal and be healed, forgive and be forgiven, love and be loved. Together we make this a holy place. Amen. Let us pray. God, grant me the serenity 
to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference, living one day at a time, enjoying one moment at a time, accepting hardship as the pathway to peace, taking as Christ did this sinful world as it is, not as I would have it, trusting that he will make all things right if I surrender to his will, that I may be reasonably happy in this life and supremely happy with him forever in the next. Amen. And now let us join in singing together His Eyes on the Sparrow. Is me. 
Good morning to all who are watching, and especially, I hope, our children. You want to know something cool? I bet most of you are watching me on a computer or a phone or something like that, and you can put me on pause. Now, Michaela, if you're watching this, my 18-year-old senior at home, this doesn't apply to you. You still need to clean your room, so. <laughs> no, but seriously, if you're watching with your children, that's great. If not, now's the time to put me on pause, grab your kids, it's time for our children's moment. Hi, kids and church family. Remember me? It's Minette. Now, usually we'll gather right in front of here and we'll have a children's moment, but today you get to watch me on video. How cool is that? Today I'd like to talk to you about hospitality. Can you say that, kids? Hospitality. Awesome. Now do you know what it means? It means that we can be nice to each other and share love with others, just like Jesus did. You know how at the beginning of the service, when we all walk around and we give hugs and we shake hands? That's hospitality. But a couple weeks ago, just like Dave said, we can't give hugs anymore. But have you ever heard of a virtual hug? I've given lots of those. Psalm 91.4 says, He will cover you with his feathers. He will shelter you with his wings. His faithful promises are your armor and protection. Sounds like a virtual hug right from heaven. And how about after church? We all go in the big fellowship area and we eat and we talk. That's hospitality. Jesus did that too. In one of the great miracles Jesus performed, he fed 5,000 people with just loaves and fishes. What? 5,000 people with loaves and fishes? Now that's hospitality. There's so many ways that we can show and share hospitality. Those were just a few. So kids, can you do me a favor today? Can you show hospitality? Do you know what today is? Today's Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day to all those who are moms and those who are just like moms to us. So will you give your mom a great big hug or send a virtual hug to someone and share hospitality just like God did for us? Because that's hospitality. Good morning, friends and welcome to our home. I invite you to join with me in prayer this morning for prayers for our community, for those who are ill and those who are in pain. Lord, we pray. And Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. For the brave men and women who put themselves at risk in order to serve and support those in need, Lord, we pray. And Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. For the alcoholics and addicts who are on the streets or in hospitals or treatment centers and are struggling with their addiction, Lord, we pray. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. And for friends and family who are feeling isolated or lonely because of the COVID-19 pandemic or because of broken relationships, Lord, we pray. And Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. And Lord, I pray for my good friends at the Recovery Church. Keep us safe. Help us to be brave, Lord, and continue to reach out and serve others. And thank you for this wonderful mission you've given us. Amen. And using the prayer of St. Francis, we pray, Lord, Make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is discord, harmony. Where there is error, truth. 
Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. And where there is sadness, joy. O Divine Master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. And now we're going to hear our story of hope from Eric. Um, sadly, our friend Roger passed away last Sunday, probably while we were worshiping together. And uh, he was a really important person in Eric's life. So Eric is going to talk about the hope that he found in knowing Roger. Hey, everybody. My name is Eric, and I'm an alcoholic. And today, for the story of hope, I wish to honor our dear friend Roger Wingert whom we lost this last week. Roger was a very special man indeed. I know that he meant a lot to all of you, and he meant a lot to me. And he taught me many valuable life lessons, and he played a big part in my recovery walk and in my faith walk also. Um, as most of you know, over the last six years, Roger has been faced with many difficult health problems. Um, he, he's, he was a diabetic and he lost a leg as a result of his diabetes and he developed other health problems over the last six years. He was confined, confined to a wheelchair and things kind of spiraled down from there for Roger uh, with his laundry list of health problems. But all the while, Roger demonstrated a quality that I hope to have someday, and I aspire to, and that is to uh, walk with grace and dignity in the face of the adversity that we're dealt in this life. And Roger did that with vigor, and all of us benefited from that. And I, I have many stories about Roger, but in the spirit of keeping the message brief, I would just say that Roger was a really, really good example of what our special community at the Recovery Church can do uh, to transform people and to, um, to heal and to provide bridges for people to a better way to live. And Roger just was a, was a shining example of that dignity, that grace, humility, gratitude, kindness, compassion, and love in the simplest form. And Roger had that essence that he shared. And, and I hope that his memory uh, with all of us will provide a kind of a, a touchstone or, um, of what can happen to people in this community. And, and uh, I'm going to miss him. Man, I just a couple of things about Roger. One thing, and, and I know most of you have heard this who know Roger, is that whenever you you finish visiting or, or part ways, Roger would always say, remember, God loves you and so do I. And I, I those were the last words that Roger spoke to me. And man, that's keeping it simple. And that's the kind of love, that agape love that, that we need in this community. And Roger demonstrated that. Roger got me to uh, bring music to the nursing home where he lived at Ramsey County Care Center. And I started to go there every Monday right up until the coronavirus. And that has really enriched my life to be able to bring music into a place like that and provide something like that at no charge. That That's something that has really changed me and I'm grateful to Roger for that and it's taught me the value of um of special things like that you know that that and and it relates to my recovery too and my sobriety because um you know I'm able to share something like that and how special that is I just I'm going to miss Roger a lot and I know that he's going to miss all of us and Roger, 
Remember, God loves you and so do we. Good morning, everyone. My name is John and I'm an alcoholic. Uh, this is the time of the service where we usually pass around the basket and for your generous uh, donations, that's how this church stays open. Um, unfortunately, times have changed, um, but these doors still have to stay open. And what I mean by that is this place is still up and running. Um, bills still have to be paid. And um, we actually had, we're talking about something on Tuesday that I said I would literally get on my hands and knees and beg for your donations. But we're gonna do that in two weeks. So <laughs> give me a little time, and plus I have a bad knee. But um, <laughs> honestly, um, we all love this place very much, and we want these doors to stay open, and it's through your donations is how we do it. So there's two ways we could do this. You could send a check to Linda at our office at 253 State Street, St. Paul, Minnesota, 55107. Or you can go online to the recoverychurch.org. There's a big heart on there, and you click on it, and you make your donation. And please give generously so I don't have to get on my hands and knees and beg, but I will if I have to. That's how much I love this place. And let us now join in with Halle Hallelujah. Hello, everyone. Today's scripture reading comes from John 14, verses 1 through 14. Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. My Father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would have I told you that I'm going there to prepare a place for you? And if, you, I, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you may also be where I am. You know the way to the place where I'm going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you are going, so how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you really know me, you will know my Father as well. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said, Lord, show us the Father, and that will be enough for us. Jesus answered, Don't know me, Philip. You don't know me, Philip, even after I have been among you such a long time. Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Don't you believe that I am in the Father and that the Father is in me? The words I say to you, I do not speak on my own authority. Rather, it is the Father living in me who is doing this work. Believe me when I say that I am in the Father and the Father is in me, or at least believe on the evidence of the works themselves. Very truly, I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing, and they will do even greater things than these because I am going to the Father, and I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. You may ask for me for anything in my name, and I will do it. May God's blessing be added to these scriptures today. Amen. You may have heard the story about the little child who had trouble falling asleep at night. 
She cried out to her dad, Dad, I'm scared. Can you read me a story? So dad reads her a story, tucks her in. Then she cries out for her mom. Mommy, can you get me a glass of water? Her mom does and says, Honey, you need to try to fall asleep now. And she cries again. And both her parents come into her room and say a bedtime prayer with her. Again, she's afraid and says she does not like being alone in the dark. Her parents reassure her and say, but honey, you know you are never really alone. God is always with you. And she replies, I need the God with skin on. That little girl is me. <laughs> Maybe it's you too. <laughs> That's why I love Jesus so much. Jesus is God with skin on, and so are many of you. Today we heard a text that we often read at funerals. It's so comforting and reassuring. It is Jesus, after the resurrection, before he leaves for the last time, telling his disciples goodbye and telling them that he's going ahead to prepare a place for them. I love the image. He talks about it as a mansion. In my father's mansion are many rooms. When people die, I like to imagine what kind of a room Jesus is preparing for them. Because no matter who they are, I'm absolutely sure he would want them to feel at home. Last Sunday morning, we prayed for our dear friend Roger, who had entered hospice care. We later learned that God called him home while we were worshiping. I like to think that it was while Deb was playing his favorite song, Love is a Many Splendored Thing. I'm sure that must have been playing in the room that Jesus had prepared for him. And when we can, we will gather as a community and celebrate his life. Radical hospitality, that's what this is all about, making people feel right at home feel like they belong. That's what God offers in Jesus. And this church, as Manette mentioned, is so good at radical hospitality, and we've all been missing it a lot. Often when people visit for the first time, they say one of two things. They either say, it was so real, or I felt right at home. Mine is the church where everybody's welcome. I know it's true because I got through the door. And when we gather, people know they are welcome. I miss the weekly dose of radical hospitality. From the second you walk in the door, you will be treated by handshakes and hugs from Eva and Tim. That's the outside door. Then when you get to the door to the sanctuary, you might get a hug from Geraldo and Dee. And you will then join others to sing together and pray together and share in communion, served by your friends, often with your name being used. You may tell your story, you may ask for a prayer, and then when the formal service is over, you will join the feast. We have an abundance of coffee and food that is brought from all over the city, many hands touching it, making it before it gets here. <laughs> We are not talking stingy like those churches that just have the coffee and the store-bought cookies. We are talking abundant. Why? Because many people, many of the people who come here are not only spiritually hungry, but they're physically hungry too. And a God with skin on understands hunger. Food has always been a part of hospitality. How hard it has been these past few months not being able to gather. Because everything I just described about hospitality takes place in person. We are a people who need to meet and to talk and to hug and to eat together. The other day I listened to our famous state epidemiologist, Dr. Michael Osterholm, speak to church leaders on a live Facebook feed. It was a very sobering address. Given the landscape of COVID-19, all the things we used to do to show our hospitality are now potentially dangerous to those we love and to ourselves. When we do begin to gather again, 
we will have to do it so very differently, at least for the foreseeable future. We may need to limit our group size and forego singing and communion and fellowship. What? How can we show radical hospitality if we have to change the way we do practically everything? Well, here's some good news for you. Some of us have had that experience. I recall a woman, and I've shared this before, um, in, in an a, a group talking about how she, was, how she had stayed sober for the year that she had stayed sober. And she said, oh, I listened, to my, I listened uh, to my sponsor. My sponsor said I only had to do one thing, and that one thing was to stop drinking. And then she said, she didn't tell me I'd have to change every other thing about my life, too. Some of us have had to change the way we do every single thing. And I have great faith in you. I can't wait to see what hospitality around here is going to look like in the future. It'll be weird. I know it will. Now is the time for us to think outside the box and imagine new ways to make a home for one another. How will you offer hospitality that is loving and safe and kind when we slowly begin to gather again? I am a walker. It used to, I'm not using a walker yet, that'll come soon. <laughs> I am a walker. It used to be that when I was walking down the street and someone left the sidewalk to avoid walking past me and walk around me, I would feel that rather snubbed. Now I see it as a sign of kindness. Who will first step into the street to allow for social distancing? Now we smile and wave at each other's gesture of hospitality. When these things are done with love, they feel almost as good as a hug. And speaking of social distancing, Dr. one thing Dr. Osterholm said really stuck with me. He said, this is not a time for social distancing. This is a time for physical distancing. People need social connections now more than ever. If you are alone all day, one phone call matters. Going to a meeting on Zoom or watching worship online can make the difference between deadly isolation and life-giving community. I save greeting cards for inspiration. I buy a lot of them for that, too. I had one on my desk for years, and it had the quote on it, Your smile welcomed me with the love and warmth of home. Yesterday, one of you told me about the walk you had taken. You said you smiled at every person you saw, and then said, we can practice hospitality everywhere. How true. We have something unique to offer. Don't stop now when the world needs it most. Amen.
It's not surprising that the gift that Jesus left us uh, is a gift of radical, extravagant hospitality, and it's a meal we share every single week. All are welcome to this table. This is a table of grace, love, and forgiveness, and new life. This is Christ's way of saying, I forgive you, I love you, and I will never, ever leave you. So come in your brokenness, if you feel you are not worthy, know that you are today's guest of honor. This meal is Jesus' way of saying, I forgive you, I love you, I will never leave you. On the last night of his life, after sharing in the meal, there was bread left on the table. He picked it up and gave it to those he loved most and said, this is my life, my body broken open for you. I forgive you. He then took the cup, blessed it, passed it, and said, drink from this, all of you. This is a cup of new life, my blood that I have shed willingly for you because I love you. After that, he said, whenever you drink from this cup and eat this bread, remember me, and I will always be with you. I will never leave you. So Holy Spirit, pour out your blessing on this sacred meal. Bless us as we eat and drink that we may be transformed by your grace and set free to love without fear. Help us to see your face in every stranger and to bring hope to those who have little. Amen. Let us pray. We do not have to be perfect or even good to come to this table, O Lord. We simply need to come as we are and to celebrate your power to change our lives. We know that we have fallen short of what we want to do. We trust only in your love. We rejoice that your love is so great that you invite us to come as guests, especially in our brokenness. Grant that we may receive this sacrament as a turning point in our lives. May we grow to be like you as you become the center of our living. Amen. And now you are invited to offer your own prayers um, and to share in communion in your own home.
Let us offer our thanks for this meal. We give you thanks, Lord, that you have given us the cup of joy and the bread of peace, which refresh and restore us to new life. We ask you to strengthen us through this gift of your love. Help us to accept one another and to not judge people who are not like us. Help us to keep in deep community love toward one another, in patience in the midst of the problems of life, and in the hope of eternal life, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives in our lives and with you through the Holy Spirit, one God, world without end. Amen. Now I invite you to uh, stand if you wish, join hands if you wish, maybe put a little hand over your own heart, and we'll close with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.